And without further ado, Dave. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to read a little bit of poetry. <clears throat> I like to write poems. That's how I started before I started writing music. I started writing poems, and uh, it's always been a lot of fun. <clears throat> This poem actually uh, got on Prairie Home Companion, believe it or not. Garrison didn't read it, but it did get on the show. He wanted poems about spring. So I wrote a piece called Spring is a Many Splendored Thing. And it got read on the show, and I'd like to read it for you. Very timely, as we know. When spring finally came in, winter finally went home, and it was a pleasant surprise. And those mountains of snow look like little snow cones right before our very eyes. The sun had got bright and the robins came back and a flower peeked up through the mud. And I thought of life and I thought of hope and I thought of all the above. The neighbors went back to helping themselves and the coats all went back with the hats. And I tried to connect with an old flame of mine but I did not know where she was at. And the buds any day will break out and bloom, and the circle of life will begin. And I will walk out in that fresh air of spring from the very same door I walked in. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is a poem I wrote. I was <clears throat> going to a poetry reading, and I wanted something fresh to read. And I, I, I just happened to be looking down Peach Street, and... Uh, an ambulance was like coming flying down the street and right behind the ambulance was a guy in a pizza truck or a car he had a little Volkswagen with a little pizza <laughs> and he was catching all the lights with the ambulance and I thought well there's there's an idea so I wrote a poem called Pizza Man I saw the lights in my rearview mirror I heard the siren squeal as an ambulance flew down the street with a pizza man right on their heels. Both were swerving through their lanes down that sunset strip. I could almost see that lease on life. I could almost see that tip. Both had destinations. Both were true and bold. Both knew hesitation could leave the whole thing cold. So when I said my prayers that night in the only way I can, I pray that God deliver me, just like a pizza man. <laughs> uh, I like to play, at one time I used to like to play laundry basketball. You know, you, look, you curl up your socks and you throw them into the hamper and you pretend you're, you know, Magic Johnson or something. And so I wrote this, and I hit the lamp right by the hamper, and it went out. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. About three hours later, it came back on. <clears throat> I didn't do anything to it. So kind of an inspiration for this poem. It's called Ode to a Burned Out Light Bulb. <laughs> sometimes a lamp can take a hit, but sometimes the light bulb quits. And just when you think the light bulb's gone, you looked again and it came back on. Here to think the bulb was shot. I guess it was a bit somewhat, but like a flash from the great beyond, my burned out light just came back on. <laughs> Thank you very much. I thought of this poem. We just got a new dog. Uh, my mother did. And at first he was very cute and funny and everything until he started eating everything and chewing everything all up. <laughs> no, he's not so cute anymore. No. So anyway, this is a poem I wrote about another dog we used to have. Kind of reminded me of it. It's called uh, Love is a Dog. I tried to, make, I tried to take my dog for a walk, but she'd rather chew on my laces. She's just a puppy, a collie, it's true, and I'll let you fill in the spaces. She chewed my mother's porch all to hell, and my mother said there was no reason. I could tell you of other things she had done, but she would accuse me of treason. It can be marathons almost each day. My heart thanks me each time I made it. So I'm so lucky that I got this poem. 
because I'm pretty sure she'd have ate it. <laughs> she'd have ate it. As you know, Sharon Stone, a very uh, infam well, infamous, but uh, famous actress, came from Sar Sagertown, Pennsylvania. And uh, she made it big in Hollywood, and she moved up towards me, and her folks had a place in West Springfield. And I live in East Springfield up there by the lake, and my understanding was she came home each Christmas. Uh, and uh, my car broke down, the, not the $150 one, but another one. <laughs> I thought, boy, wouldn't it be something if Sharon just happened to be going by and picked me up, took me home. Somebody said I was dreaming, so the name of this poem is A Christmas Dream. I dreamt that I saw Sharon Stone driving back and heading home, and she stopped right there in front of me just to ask if I could be a guy she knew from her hometown and if I had time to ride around. Next thing I know, we take this ride out across the countryside, past all those familiar little towns, digging up old stomping grounds. I told her that I was in awe of hanging with a movie star, and how I didn't mean to boast, but I watched all her movies really close. We ate and drank and talked a while. We even drove around Prescott. I felt good about this friend I found, but I knew our ride was winding down. She took my name with my pen and said she'd send an 8 by 10 and dropped me off and drove away to Hollywood. Now, who could say? Well, I wish that I could tell you more, but I guess that's what your dreams are for. <clears throat> nice short little poem. Oh, I want to read this one. I buy clothes from the thrift shop a lot, and this is one of uh, about a gray, black and gray sweater I brought. It's called my favorite Woolrich sweater. My favorite Woolrich sweater mixed with black and gray, it has become a part of me almost every day. I got it from a thrift shop for just a buck or two. Somebody else's sweater made of the finest wool. I pictured the man who wore it, who may have got too old to care, when he packed his clothes in boxes for someone else to wear. When life began its changes, and the end was soon in sight, and it was time for letting go of a lot of things he liked. Maybe like this wool-rich sweater, mixed with black and gray, that has become a part of me almost every day. <laughs>